Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my Fluid Art channel. Today I'll be demonstrating how I created this painting using a notched flip cup. If stayed at the very end, you'll see close-ups of the wet and the dry results. And um, in the description box below this video are very detailed tutorial on uh, this technique. So uh, thank you very much for watching and enjoy. Hello everyone. Uh, so tonight I'm going to do another uh, experiment using a notched flip cup. Uh, this time, instead of having the notches all the way around, I'm only going to do four, and um, I'm hoping as the paint comes out, it kind of creates two petals on either side, almost kind of like a butterfly shape. Um, and I am using a pre, since it's an experiment, I'm using um, a previously used canvas that didn't, I didn't quite like the, uh, the layout, but I'm going to use kind of similar colors to this. Uh, at the color scheme that I've come up with uh, are all very kind of harmonious colors. So I'll start with the darkest color, which is the Amsterdam Thalo Blue. Uh, it looks like a very bright color, but it dries almost like a dark uh, black, uh, a blue black. So I've got uh, that one to start with. And then um, I've also got this Liquitex Basics uh, Light Blue Violet, which I think will play really well with that. And then I also have another violet, which is Ultramarine Violet Light from Amsterdam. I have Golden's Permanent Maroon, which is almost like a burgundy color. I have DecoArt Metallics 24 Karat Gold. And I have Amsterdam Burnt Under Umber that I have added some copper and gold to, so it has a bit of a metallic shine to it. And then I also have uh, dioxazine purple. And oh, I guess I didn't have the tube ready for that. Sorry about that. Uh, but I will, before I do anything else, I'm going to show you my paint consistencies. Uh, I usually get so excited about what I'm about to do that I forget to show this. And I know that's really important and useful, for, especially for uh, beginner pourers. So my paint consistency is a mound on a mound. It could be slightly thicker. I did add some water to this so that it uh, flows really smoothly off of the stick. But as it hits the surface of the paint off of the, uh, the stir stick, it does leave a mound on a mound and then disappears. So I want it to be thick enough that any cells that get created because of the metallics, they hold their shape. So the first thing, oh, and I apologize. I'm also using as my base, I'm using Amsterdam Titanium White. So I will go ahead, oh, nope. Before I do that, let's layer my cup. So let me get my colors up here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna start with a nice healthy layer of Titanium White in the bottom. And I'm going to layer this again like a sandwich pour. So instead of pouring the colors down the side of the cup or from up high so that they mingle, I'm going to pour them into the cup on top of each other and just drizzled so that they lay on top of each other. That feels really thick. And uh, I started with a darker color there, so I'm going to come in with a lighter color on top of it. of that violet, I'm going to put some of this gold, the 24 karat gold. There are a lot of air bubbles in this, so I'm expecting to have to torch several times. So on top of that, then I'm going to go with another dark color. I'll go with the dark purple. And then this blue violet on top of that, which is going to be a great contrast. I love that. And on top of that, I'm going to put some of this dark brown. So add some a really nice earthy tone. Might give us some cells also. Get over here. And then we'll go with our Prussian blue. 
When I'm using metallics, I like to put them in between layers of other colors so it gives something for the cells to rise through. Um, I'm going to put another thin layer of white. that and we'll come back in with some of these other colors I think I'm just going to go with some of the darker colors it off with more white. This canvas is a 16 by 20, so I need about 12 ounces of mixed paint. This is a 12 ounce cup, because I've, but because I've notched the cup, I can't quite fill it up to the top. So there's probably 11, 11 and a half ounces of paint there. Now I can put on a base coat. Okay. So I want these notches to be kind of facing each corner. So I'm gonna try and flip it that way. And I might have to adjust the thing, but let's try this. One, two, three, flip. There we go. That's pretty good. Now the section is gonna hold that paint in there until I poke a hole in the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. As soon as I remove that, that should start seeping out. Looking very cool. It's still coming out. I'm going to spin it a little bit so that paint spreads out. Give some room for it to come out of the cup a little more. Lovely. I still see it coming out, so we're just gonna let that sit and we're gonna be patient. Maybe we're gonna pop a couple of air bubbles while we wait. have to torch several times but I'm loving these cells that are coming up amazing so pretty I might end up wrecking this a little bit we'll see and instead of twisting this time I'm just gonna pull straight up Interesting pattern. Let's pop that big bubble there. Still a lot of paint here in the center. Those paints are very thick. So we're going to take our Ceramax Smack Stick and we're going to draw out from the center through each of these little petals. Oops. Paper towel. Come from the center here, come out. I 
I may end up doing a balloon dip there in the middle. We'll see. But let's uh, let that percolate for a little bit longer. Pop a few more bubbles that I see. There's a big mound of paint here in the center, so as soon as I start spreading that, that should really spread out. But those rec lines look really cool. Some interesting motion. Let's see what happens. Give it a gentle spin first. And it is doing exactly as I was hoping. It's kind of spreading out this way rather than all directions. That's cool. Let's give it another gentle spin. So here are the results of my second attempt at a notched flip cup. A couple of observations. I did make one mistake. My base coat was too thick. I didn't thin it out with a little bit of water. That would have helped the other paints move a little better. So it did kind of distort the lines a bit as it was spinning out because that white paint was grabbing onto the um, poured colors rather than allowing it to flow. But I got some really great cells. I'm super happy with this color palette. Look at that uh, purple and gold layered over top of each other. So pretty. That 
Prussian blue is going to dry really dark and create even more contrast. This color gradient in here is gorgeous. Some really nice boulder cells there. I love that galactic kind of look there. Maybe even a little ghost face. He's cute. And yeah, these cells over here are really great. I'm loving that deep maroon color. Wow, so pretty. The wreck lines there. Really nice. I, I'm so glad that I used that burnt umber with the metallic in it. Look at the shine on that. And it adds such a, uh, an earthy quality to this with all of the blues and violets. I think that's really cool. The only thing I need to figure out, second observation, with this notch flip cup, I don't like the center. I need to figure out some other way of making that do what I want. So that will be the next one. Um, I did wreck that enough that it no longer looks like a man part. <laughs> Especially in this orientation. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> so I think this is the better angle for it. Even though maybe in this orientation, it kind of looks like a, a person with his arms up in the air, legs spread wide. Kind of cool. Or maybe um, all of this are the wings on a butterfly over here. And this is the central part. But um, yeah, I think I prefer it this kind of orientation. But anyway, I think this is a lot of fun. I will definitely try this again and uh, figure out some new way to mess with the center. <laughs> we'll see. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and come back and see me sometime.